moved to a new school district and I'm putting my daughter Ashley. She starts her freshman year. And I really love the school. It's real progressive. There's a lot of high academics. They teach kids just not only the academics, but to have a social conscience about how important it is to recycle, global warming, all of that. So I'm really excited about being there. There's just one problem I noticed, and that is a diversity problem. The school lacks diversity. So I brought this problem up to the local school board, and they're really receptive to it. And they said, Sarah Paul, we want you to be our diversity coordinator to help fix this problem. So this is going to be a video log over the next few years explaining how that effort is going. Little background, the Pleasant Valley school system is probably 90% either white or Asian, so it really lacks that vibrancy. And that's what my argument was, that cultural diversity is important for a couple reasons. First, it's important for our kids because this is a global environment and we need kids to interact with other cultures so they become more tolerant. They understand culture issues, that they raise your culture IQ. They say you have like an academic IQ, there's also a culture IQ. And the second reason is that it's just the right thing to do. When I accepted this position, I went to the inner city and looked at some of these disadvantaged youths and one of these people I met was a guy named Jerome. He had the biggest, happiest smile you could ever see, and it just warmed my heart. He comes from a family of five, his mother is a single mother, and God bless her trying to raise five kids alone with no father, and he goes to a school that I went to, and I was shocked. There's graffiti everywhere, there's trash, there's security guards everywhere, you have to go through a metal detector. I detected hostility everywhere. The test scores are horrible, and one of the things that really hit me is, why should Jerome have to go to a school like that with really no hope when just across, you know, 10 miles down the road was this affluent school with all these opportunities? And obviously the reason is simple, it's racism. And the way we can combat this ridiculous racism is to allow these good schools to be available for everyone. And that's what my goal is as the diversity consultant or the diversity coordinator. It's my first yearly update. It's been one year and I'm gonna give you, I have some great progress to say. I have some challenges, but we got some progress. The first progress is that the school system of Pleasant Valley is no longer 90% non-diverse. Now we have 30% diversity in the school system. It's like a huge victory, I'm really excited. All right, that's the good part now. There are some challenges that we're working on. One of the challenges we're working on is behavior problems and some, I hate to say it, but there's some patterns of discrimination that are happening because we looked at the records of the past year and there's a lot of kids getting suspended and a disproportionate amount of them are disadvantaged youths that we brought in, the diversity. Remember that guy I talked about last year, that happy-go-lucky kid with a big smile, always wants to make people laugh? Well, he's real talkative and he was in his math class, for example, and he was talking, goofing around, he was doing a new funky dance or whatever, and she wouldn't stop. The teacher told him to stop it, so because he didn't stop right away, he got suspended. Another problem is, is that the test scores are really starting to dip, and because of these, disadvantaged kids are just as smart as the white kids, so it's obvious that the teachers are not teaching them, they're not being relevant to them. It's kind of like Jerome, and with the behavior, these teachers need to unlearn their patterns of bigotry and racism and deal with kids the way they are. They're all not the same, and that more disadvantaged kids are getting suspended and they're getting lower scores tells me there's a failure on the part of the teachers and administrators, a bunch of white people, if I must be honest, and they're not adapting. And so what I'm doing is I'm going to have mandatory diversity classes for them. I'm going to have these cultural events and we're going to continue to push diversity so they can learn and unlearn their bad behaviors because we can be a great school. I already feel it's a lot more vibrant. It's exciting. So that's my update for this year. I'll talk to you next year. This is the second yearly update. Um, well, there's been progress. The good news is the school is 50% diverse. Unfortunately, a lot of people are not adapting to the new situation, and you guys probably heard of that there's like been a gang fight in the school, and the SWAT team had to be called out. Unfortunately, Jerome, remember that kid? He's a good kid. He just made some bad choices, and I guess someone was mad-dogging him. 
I don't know what mad dogging means, but he says someone mad dogged him, and so he took out a knife and stabbed the other kid, and it created a diversity problem. Now, I'm not blaming the kids. I'm really blaming the teachers and administrators, because I talked to the community leaders, and one of the perspectives they gave, this is hard for the kids to relate to a teacher or administrator that's a different color than them, th that doesn't look like them. So I'm pushing for a program that we can get rid of these stupid old white teachers and get some diversity in the teaching administration to help with this problem. I think that'll help. Unfortunately, we're already losing a lot of the white population because, you know, let's face it, there's a lot of racists out there and they don't understand the importance of experiencing this diversity. But we're gonna stop it. We're, we're gonna make this a great school. I, I'm convinced this is gonna be a great school, yeah. Our school is officially an at-need school now because our test scores have plummeted. But again, I think we have teachers that are not connecting with our diversity students. So we need to fix that. And, and we will fix that, I promise you. Otherwise, my name is not Ruth Paul. Because troublemakers aren't exclusive to just one race or anything. Anyone can be that. There's just a few bad apples, and we're going to crack down on those bad apples. We're going to put metal detectors in, and we got a lot more security staff down in the school to help with that effort. And we're going to do random pat-downs, so I think that's really going to help the school be a safer environment for your children. Uh, should all work. This is my year three and final update. I've made a lot of progress. I made a lot of progress. The school is now 70% diverse, and that is an excellent thing. Unfortunately, I'm having to pull my daughter out of the school because the, the environment's horrible. There's crime and low test scores, and it's not... No one's to blame for it except the administrations and the teachers and the failure to really adopt a progressive mindset is is really led to this so anyway i just i just it has nothing to do with race or anything like that no no i just need to move to a different and safer school so i actually found one it's really great they're really progressive they have great academics i think my daughter will do great there they, they just have one problem though it's not a very diverse school so i'm gonna talk to the school board about that and see if i can fix it Talk to you guys later.